For this lesson, we'll be going over the fundamentals of Bode plots. So what are Bode plots? They are a graphical representation of the magnitude and or phase angle of a transfer function in reference to angular frequency, which is measured in radians per second. These graphs are displayed on semi-log paper in logarithmic scales. The reason it's semi-log paper, because your gain, which is measured in decibels, would be on your y-axis and it's not in a logarithmic scale in reference to your x-axis, which is your angular frequency, which again is measured in radians per second. So what are the purpose of Bode plots? Bode plots illustrate the relative stability of a system. They also provide visual insight of how circuit elements influence the frequency response. If you look in the illustration below, there's a passive low pass filter, which has a resistor and a capacitor. As the frequency increases, the gain decreases, as you see in the Bode plot to the right. Now the equation that's associated with that Bode plot is in the S domain. So the transfer functions you'll see on the, all the example problems and everything you see on the Bode plots will be in that particular domain. And we'll go over this a little bit more in the examples. When trying to understand your transfer function, a very key element is understanding angular frequency. Now your angular frequency is measured in radians per second. And in your equation below, you'll see on the numerator in blue would be considered your zeros. And on your denominator in red, that is considered your poles. Now everything you see in blue and red is your angular frequency. Now anytime it's on the numerator, you add 20 decibels per decade on your Bode plot. And when it's a pole, it's a negative 20 decibels per decade. So the more poles you have, the slope will actually get steeper and steeper and vice versa as far as your zeros. In the illustrations below, there are three Bode plots. One of them has a angular frequency of two, so that actually starts sloping down at 20 decibels per decade at a frequency of two. Same thing with 100, and I have vice versa. I have a zero at 100, so the slope actually goes upward. And we'll go over this more in example problems. That way you can get a better understanding of how angular frequency works. Now the easier of the two parameters to understand would be your Bode gain. The initial Bode gain is located at an angular frequency of 1 and can be found using the equation of 20 log of k, and that will give it in decibels. So in the equation to the right, I have this big equation that has your angular frequency and your Bode gain. The only parameter I'm concerned with is k, which is your Bode gain, and you're going to plug and chug it in the equation 20 log k, and that will provide you where the gain is for this Bode plot uh, in reference to an angular frequency of 1. Now, we need to do some examples. That way you can get a better understanding of how the transfer function plots on a Bode plot. All right. For our first example, we're going to start off with a relatively easy one. For this one, we're going to have to plot the following transfer function, which is 100 over 10s plus 100. Now, again, this is in the S domain. So... On every equation that you get, if it's not simplified already, you're going to have to simplify it. The goal is to make this equation look similar to the one we had in the PowerPoints, because if you have it in that equation, it's easier to plug and chug in your Bode plot. So let's go ahead and simplify this down first. And I'm going to do it in stages. That way you get an idea of what I'm doing. All right. The first thing I want to do is get S all by itself. So let me go ahead and write this over here. And S domain, of course. So it's going to be 100 over 10s plus 100. So first things first, isolate 10 from s. So we're going to do this by dividing 10 by the denominator. So it's going to be 100 over 10 times s plus 100 over 10, which is obviously going to give us 10. So we can simplify this down. 100 over 10 is going to give us 10, and that's going to be s plus 10. So our goal is to have this equation still look like the one from the PowerPoint. It's not there yet. So we need s over the angular frequency plus 1. So that's very easy. What we do is go ahead and divide the denominator by 10 one more time. So it's going to look like, let's bring it down here. So it's going to be 10 over s plus 10. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to divide this by 10, this by 10, and do the same thing I did earlier and just bring 10 out here. So that way it looks something like this. And 
And don't forget my 10. So this looks just like our problem. All we have to do now is simplify it a little bit more and just go ahead and do 10 divided by 10. So it's going to give us a final transfer function of s over 10 plus 1. And this looks similar to the equation that we have in our PowerPoints. By having this equation, we can go ahead and plug and chug this right in our Bode plot. Anytime it's s over a variable, that's your angular frequency. That right there, angular frequency. And that guy right there is your Bode gain. Let me go ahead and clean this up and make room for our Bode plot. I went ahead and inserted my Bode plot here so that way we can start plugging and chugging this thing. And taking your transfer function and plotting it in your Bode plot, there's a few methods you can adopt. The first one we're going to do is we're going to find our Bode gain. That's very simple. Since we talked about earlier, our Bode gain is this guy right here, this variable all by itself. It's 1. Well, all we do is plug and chug it in that one equation that we had, which is log of k. Now k is 1, so if you plug and chug this in your calculator, it's going to give you a dv of 0, if you put a 1 right there. 1 of log is 0 times 20 is 0, which means at an angular frequency of 1, because like we talked about, your gain is always at angular frequency of 1, angular frequency of 1 is right there, and it's 0. So right now I'm going to put a dot right there, so that way we know where our gain is. The step I'm going to do is I'm going to actually make a note of when we're going to have an angular frequency change, whether it's your zeros or your poles, I'm still going to log it. What I'm going to do this is, for example, this one, we have a pole of 10, which means it's going to have a downward slope of negative 20 decibels per decade. Now here's what I mean by that. That's 10. In this vertical line right here, there's going to be a change. Somewhere on this vertical line, there's going to be a change. Now here's the good news. Since I have a very simple equation here, I know that my graph is going to look something like this. So I'm going to have a horizontal line until there's a change. And I'll go ahead and put a line right here. Now, there's going to be a change right there, 10 radians per second. And like we said, since it's a pole, it's going to have negative 20 decibels per decade. So it's going to go down 20 decibels, which is, this is negative 20 per decade. An angular frequency of 10, and now I have to go 20 decibels per decade. This is a decade, this is 20 decibels, that negative 20, and then 10. So that's 20 decibels, 5, 10, 15, 20. Now I'm going to do the same thing again. Decade of 10, 20 decibels, 5, 10, 15, 20. So that should be 40. Do the same thing again. 5, 10, 15, 20. It's negative 60, and so on and so on. So if I was going to plot this, it would go from here all the way down. See how the dots are connecting perfectly with that slope? And I'll keep going down with it. So I can all go all the way down here just by falling in those dots. So all this does is tell you how to adjust your slope. Since I had a straight line, all I had to do was adjust my slope by 20 decibels per decade in the negative direction. Now the method we have is we find our gain. And obviously we're using our equation right there. We make a note of all frequency changes. That way it flags you. and then go ahead and plot one point at a time. Okay? Let's do another problem just to get a little bit more familiar with this process. For this example, we're going to plot the following transfer function. Now it looks this transfer function is already simplified down, so we won't have to do that. Let's do the first thing that we talked about. Let's do our first step. Let's find our Bode gain. So that's dB, or decibels, which is 20 times log of k. Now we don't have any constants right here. There's no numbers outside these parentheses, which means you can assume there's a 1 there. Anytime that you can assume there's a 1 there, it gives you a gain of 0. If you actually put a 1 right there, log 1 is 0 times 20, gives you 0. Like we talked about, first thing we're doing on a plot is at 0, put a dot. Angular frequency 1, gain 0. 
right there, put a dot, because your slope is going to intersect that at some, some form or fashion. Now next, we have one zero and one pole. Now one zero, that means that's at 50, we have an angular frequency of 50 in the positive direction, and then a negative direction you have at 5k. And I'll show you how this works. Next step is make a note of every spot this would actually affect. For example, 50, so we have 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. Right there, there's going to be a change on your plot. Same thing for the 5k. We have 1k, 2k, 3k, 4k, 5k. There's going to be a change right there. So as you're doing this plot, you should see changes along those axes right there. So, it's going to be about right there. So it means there's going to be a horizontal line between here all the way until we get to our zero, which is 50. So I'm going to put a straight line in there to make it easy on us. So I got a nice little straight line right there. Since this is zero, it's going to be 20 decibels per decade, which means this is going to go in the upward slope. When you do a decade, you have to do exactly one decade over. For example, two, three, four, five, which means this line right here is the next decade. Plus 20 decibels per decade, which means I'm going to go up to 20 right there. So there's a dot right there. So I went up 20, one decade. One decade is, count the lines, 10 all the way over. My major guidelines are a little darker. It's just easier for me to follow. So I just count five over from them. And I'll do the same thing again. Two, three, four, five. Three, four, five. And the good news is, that's where our next change is anyway. So what I'm going to do is, go all the way up until I hit that one point. So we're going to go another 20 decibels. So 5, 10, 15, 20. It should be 40. It is. And then we're going to go right there. And that should be 50. That should be 5K. I'll give you an idea where we're at. So at 5K, we have a change. And the change is your pole, not a zero. So anytime you have a pole, it's going to be negative 20 decibels. Now we're already going up 20 decibels per decade. Well, now you have a change of negative 20 decibels per decade. Well, they basically cancel each other out. Now, your line's going to go from going upward to breaking even. When you go from zero to poles, it doesn't mean you automatically switch directions. It means you've got to compensate for which direction you're already going. If I'm going up by 40, it's only going to go up by 20 now. Well, since I'm only going up by 20, it's going to basically go horizontal now. It's going to go zero gain. So, which means from here all the way until eternity, it's going to be a horizontal line. And let's see if we can plot this, make it look pretty. So I'm going to connect the dots. I'm going to go right here to right there, and then from here all the way over. And that's going to go over in, for eternity. So that's all I did. I went ahead and just followed our rules, found our gain, noted where the changes were when we did the angular frequency, and then I plotted one dot at a time. I just went one to the next to the next. You have poles and zeros. Be aware of how they change. Doesn't that mean you automatically switch directions. You have to be able to understand of how the gain changes in reference to your uh, angular frequency. Let's do one more. All right, for this example, we're going to go the opposite direction and see if we can find the transfer function based on the plot. So we're going to follow similar steps as we did last time. First thing we're going to do is try to find our gain. Well, angular frequency of 1, which is right there. So we have a dot right there. Well, if you look over, our decibel is 40, so which means our, so let's put our Bode gain down. So it's decibels equals 20 log of K. All right. Well, we have 40 decibels. And then log of K. There we go. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to simplify this down. So right now we have divide both sides by 20. Give us 2 equals log of k. Now we want to find k. 
the best way to do this to get rid of log just do 10 and then we bring our 2 down right there and I'll give you k so 10 to the 2 equals 100 k equals 100 we know k equals 100 so that was the first thing we found was our Bode gain. Now we're going to note every time there's a change on our plot. So let me go ahead and get rid of this. Let's make a note of all of our poles and all of our gains. Well, the first thing I'm noticing is there's a slope going downward from the get-go, even before you get to your Bode gain. So which means there's going to be a pole of, I'll tell you what, a pole of S, and then we'll do our zeros, and then we'll put it in the equation. So right then and there, we already found one of them. So we already know, just from the giga, since it has a downward slope, we know one of the poles is an S. Now, we notice there's a change right there, change right here, and then you have 20 decibels per decade. But then it, the slope goes down even further. So you have a negative 20, then it drops to negative 60. That means you have a negative 40 decibels per gain, so which means there's a change right there as well. So we have a change, let me change colors. Change right here, we have a change right here, and a change right here. So we have three changes. Well, right here, that's going to be a zero. Because your gain's not actually getting steeper, it's actually leveling off. Which means you have a change in the opposite direction. Instead of going downward to pole direction, now you're going upward in the zero direction. Which means you have a zero at an angular frequency of... And that looks like 100. Okay. So I have negative 20 decibels here per decade. Then I went from zero decibels here. And then where it looks like we're going back down to negative 20 decibels again. So it looked like we encountered another pole. So our next pole was at 1K. So now we have 1,000 right there. Well, it went on for one decade, and then the slope increased even more to 40 decibels per decade. We added one more pole right there, which is 10K. So now you have another pole right there. So if you're going to plug this in an equation, it's going to be look something similar to what we have here. And again, we're going to use the reference uh, equation that we used in the PowerPoints which is 100, and it's going to be your zeros are on top, which is S over 100 plus 1 over, and that's going to be S, and this one's going to be S over 1,000 plus 1, and then same thing, S over 10K plus 1. All I did was log down all my zeros, all my poles, and I found my gain. And our whole goal is to put it in this equation. So we can go from this equation to this plot. Now the problems I'm showing you here is just give you a little refresher on the Bode plots. It's not going to teach you every little detail you need to know. However, we will go over this more in detail in frequency response and the other control system videos. Well, hopefully I gave you enough information here to be a little bit more dangerous. And if you have any questions, feel free to let me know. And I hope you'll have a good day.